Hey, I'm David Comande, Artistic Director and Conductor of the Heartland Festival Orchestra. Here with me today is our very special guest who's going to be with us soon as soloist in Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto in our program called A Triple Shot of Tchaikovsky. And that program is June 1st. Coming up, Saturday, Five Points, Washington, you can go online to heartlandfestivalorchestra.org to get tickets. My guest is Michael Brown, as I've said. We're going to have some fun. So, hey, Michael, how are you? Okay, David, how are you? How are Good. You? So you're in New York City, I think, right? I'm in my apartment in New York City. I'm sitting next to my two beautiful nine-foot Steinways and uh, my score of Tchaikovsky's first concerto and uh, just practicing and listening to the rain. And uh, looking forward to our concert. Cool. So, how do you spell Tchaikovsky? Some people wonder. Uh, to be honest, I I uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Next question. Uh, triple shot of Tchaikovsky. We're gonna do the Romeo and Juliet overture, right? And we're also gonna do the Fourth Symphony. But it strikes me that the well, first of all, what's different about a piano concerto for somebody who's wondering? Yeah. Well, this. Piano Concerto is one of the is one of the great ones, you know, not only by Tchaikovsky but by anybody. Um, it's amazing. It's incredibly fun. It's incredibly hard. There are thousands of notes, I think, literally, for the pianist to play. Um, and it's uh, I think it's going to be really uh, just a, a joy to put put together with you guys. I think it'll be really fun. Well, so everyone. Uh, people often ask me, well, what's, what's your job, meaning the conductor, when it's a concerto? And, um, and then how does that relate to what the, what the soloist does? And well, I think it's a, it's a collaboration. It's, it's about the, uh, it's like making chamber music, you know, instead of playing with a chamber group, I, I play with you and you direct the ensemble and together we, we create music uh, that's hopefully alive and with listening and character and um, so the idea I think is uh, you know there's obviously many places where I play alone there's many extended cadenzas and then of course many uh, places where the orchestra has these huge tutis that go on for minutes without the piano and the, the piano often has some dramatic entrance like in the first movement um, so yeah I think that interplay uh, makes this piece you know just so symphonic and and unique in the in the repertoire as well you know because it's as much a the huge orchestra part as as it is for the pianist yeah the scope the scale of the piece of course everything we're doing on this program is big but the scale of the piece is huge huge and you've said literally thousands of, of notes i'm kind of grateful i don't have to play them all myself but i i, I know i can count on you but um well, we, we don't know that for sure yet i mean we don't uh, we have a lot of work to do a lot of work to do it's hard I know I can count on you. So now you mentioned you have your two pianos. I heard a rumor that uh, they have names. Am, am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you hear this rumor? Just it's oh. on the streets in Peoria. It's on the or? streets. Yeah, it's on the streets here in Peoria. Yeah. Uh, this is. You want to see them? This is this is Octavia. This is Octavia. I don't know if you get a good look at at her, but she's from 1893, which is sort of around the Tchaikovsky time, and uh, this piano is Daria, and she's from. 1884. So pretty much around a couple of years after the piece was premiered, which I think is pretty cool. So, so, uh, so what's the, so I, I happen to know you're going to play a Steinway when you join us, uh, mm -hmm. one coming down from Chicago. I don't think you've met that piano yet. The one you playing on. I always love meeting new pianos. You know, I like making new friends and meeting new pianos. So it's, uh, yeah. Well, how do Octavia and Daria feel about you visiting, meeting new pianos? <laughs> well, you know, they 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 get along. They're sisters. You know, what my test is that they have differences, although they're from like a similar time period. Octavia has a bit of a heavier action. Daria is a little bit easier to play. So I feel like if I can play a passage on one and then jump over to the other and sort of successfully do it again, I feel like I, uh, you know, I don't know. It's It's just a way that I can prepare and, and try different pianos and mm -hmm. no I mean pianos are always a huge you know question for pianists you know when we're not lugging them around we're always uh, adjusting on the spot and trying to practice and get used to it the different qualities that each piano has but uh, yeah can't wait 
Well, I know, I know that you're a Steinway artist, of course, but somebody might say, well, what does that mean? Is he, is he on contract with Steinway or how does that work? Does he, does he help promote Steinways or how does that all work? Uh, I'm not sure what it means, um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm on their roster. I think there are, uh, you know, a few other thousand on their roster as well, worldwide. Um, but it's cool, you know, I, I, I can uh, visit Steinways and practice in their showrooms, which I do frequently. Uh, you know, I'm always trying to, you know, steal a couple, you know, hours of practice here and there. Well, um, I happen to know it's a, I, I do know it's a big honor. And speaking of honors, actually, you've had a few awards. Uh, what an Avery Fisher career again at Grant. Tell, mm-hmm. tell, tell people what that means. How did that happen? What is that? Well, they um, they selected me and uh, and gave me gave me money and um, and that's that's what happened you know well what did that was that a process that goes unbeknownst to you uh, um, I think that I think that process is pretty confidential and then I got a nice phone call and then there was an award ceremony in New York this was about four years ago yeah, yeah that's always nice because I had no idea uh, about that one. And and the Lincoln Center Award too, right? That one was last year. This Emerging Artist Award, where uh, they gave uh, I think there are I, I forget how many institutions around Lincoln Center, maybe thirteen or so. There's the Opera and the uh, Ballet and the New York Philharmonic and, and Chamber Music Society and Film Society, and they each pick one person. These organizations to give an award to. Yeah. So they uh, picked me last year from the Chamber Music Society, which was really nice. Well, so I already know this about you as as a musician. You're a wonderful chamber musician. I also know that you're a composer. How do you feel that composing, and you're you're in the process of being a, being a composer, which means you're in evolution. How does that affect your approach to interpretation when you're performing another composer's work? I I think it um, I think everything helps everything else, and everything feeds off each other. You know, I think the idea idea of learning a piece, I would think that my knowledge or whatever, the fact that I try to compose my own music um, would hopefully um, positively impact the way I, you know, study the score, the structure, try to understand. You know, I, uh, I try to look at music from a little bit of a composer's angle as well as a pianist and how uh, people put it together. Um, I've been teaching composition a little bit this year in New Haven. Um, and that's been quite illuminating to me just about because it's really difficult to teach composition. And uh, I think I really struggled with with that at the beginning, just to know what to say, because it's a very personal and subjective art form. Uh, it's different than uh, being a piano teacher or being an instrumental teacher, or vocal teacher, where there are certain fundamental techniques you really need to learn. But. As a composer, there are as well, you know, with harmony and counterpoint and certain things. So, right. um, no, I think uh, I think it. I'd like to think that it's a, a helpful thing for me that I do. Well, I do. Yeah, I do know that Bernstein made the comment that that for him being a composer, it it hooked him into approaching the interpretation of the work from. Uh, uh, I guess a deeper sense of how it's built and what makes it work. How do you how do you feel Tchaikovsky takes care of the question of form? It seems to me, when I was thinking about uh, the symphony, that Tchaikovsky was doing everything he could to obey the form, but he really had programmatic intent. He really wanted to be telling a story, mm-hmm. and that he was doing everything he could so that even though he was going to fit the form, it would still tell a story. Mm-hmm. And, does that strike you as a con? I, I think that's a perfect uh, description of the concerto as well, because I think he has a very set form uh, in each movement uh, on a large scale. And but I do think there are this this story, this ballet is so is, is I, I think the second movement is is a, is a mini ballet in, yeah. in a way. I think there's a lot of dance like qualities into this six eight um, movement with this middle section. And uh, and that in the brief rondo sort of march like last movement, um, which, uh, you know, I think those two movements combined uh, are still the, the first movement is really the, the huge movement in the work. 
Um, but I think that I think the work is a real journey, you know, from the French horn to the to the to the final, you know, virtuoso octaves and, and close. It's a yeah. it's a journey. Do you uh, in terms of technique? Where where was piano technique at in the history of piano playing when this was written? How does this compare to other virtuoso virtuosic works? And what's your experience and following that is what's your physical experience of playing a piece like this? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the piano. So so some of my favorite pianists are pianists, you know, from that golden era, as we say, like the turn of the 20th century. People like Joseph Hoffman, Joseph Levine, um, Harold Bauer, and uh, and these people that really interacted with these great composers like Brahms and Debussy, and people that played for people like Tchaikovsky, and you know because it's not that long ago that they were living and breathing and working, and there are you know it's a couple of generations you know, and so I think. Um, there were so many fabulous pianists in the 19th century that wrote so much virtuoso music. Um, the piano really, you know, took a huge transition in the way it was written over the 19th century from Beethoven and, you know, with the help of Chopin and Liszt and, and so many other composers. Um, this piece, I think, is one of the hardest concertos in the repertoire. And I, I say that uh, on a few reasons, for a few reasons. One, it's obviously just incredibly virtuosic work um, for the pianist, but also uh, it's a bit awkwardly written. You know, I get the sense that Tchaikovsky maybe, this is not a criticism, it's more of an observation. This didn't really quite um, understand the intricacies of some of these difficult passage work, how they fit into the hand, like someone like Franz Liszt or Mendelssohn or uh, um, Chopin, yeah, or Chopin, obviously, someone these really great pianists who were pianist composers. Mm -hmm. So, well, so I think that the uh, some of these passages just require for me just you know hours of over and over you know careful practice and and just yeah because they are they are awkward you know you have good three minutes of rest in the middle of the first movement and you come in with this huge octave passage you know it's like these things are are uh, are difficult you know in the moment you know psychologically emotionally spiritually you know so did you uh did you have an evolution in your in dealing with the octave for, as a pianist so so for people who don't know an octave is really the same note one lower and one higher and it pretty much stretches the human hand depending on personal differences and so forth. But there's a huge number of octaves where all four, <laughs> four octaves, right? Da -da 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 -da, right? So how did you get there? Is it a strain to play them? Did, did that change at some point in your growth as a, a physical pianist, physical player? I don't think it's that hard to play them. It's, it's just hard, the patterns that they set up, and it's hard the... Um, the fact that you get one shot at it, you know, um, the speed and the speed and the speed of it and the speed of it and the uh, and the idea. There's also the idea. This is the Tchaikovsky concerto. This piece has a lot of, you know, history, recorded legacy, a lot of great pianists, pro probably almost every pianist has played this piece. Horowitz, you know, I'm, uh, Martha Argerich. I mean, these people. Um, you know, I think there are people on YouTube that make like little videos of just excerpting just like the famous octave passages and have like 12 different pianists back to back do it. So it's a bit of a feat, this piece, but it's uh, it's fun. You know, it's fun to have uh, have the challenge of, of this piece. You know, I, th I think we, we probably should share with people that. Well, first of all, they're going to know from the opening chords what this piece is. They're they're iconic. They're they're so so well known. But if they're trying to get a sense of Tchaikovsky, the composer, you know, what do we say? The the, the composer with his heart on his sleeve. I mean, uh, it seems to me he doesn't hold much back. Would you agree with me? He doesn't hold anything back, and he puts, uh, you know, the piece. We all know the iconic opening, but. 
well beyond the first two minutes is is such a journey full of you know an outward pouring of you know emotion and different characters and humor and brilliant virtuosity for both the piano and the orchestra i mean it's it's a huge adventure and journey i think it goes well beyond the infamous opening which is great yeah yeah well and and that's going to be the in fact the journey of the whole darn concert i i'm i i had fun putting it together but it's just uh it's an immense thing romeo and juliet which is a world in itself and then yeah. the huge thing of the of the fourth symphony and its program the story you know that he shared that one with Najesta von Mech. he has yeah. a story to this the fourth symphony and uh, but i'm not aware is there he, he doesn't have a specific story to this concerto to my knowledge and not, I'm, that I, not to my knowledge either yeah knowledge. i have a question for you actually okay so you call the concert triple shot of Tchaikovsky, right? Yeah. yeah. So is it a triple shot of espresso? Or what is it a shot of? <laughs> or, or is it a shot of Grey Goose? Or is it a mixture of both? Uh, or is it like one after the other? Well, it seems to me that, uh, you know, it could be adrenaline too, <laughs> couldn't it? It could be adrenaline. Triple I have shot a of thing. Yeah. yeah, it was triple shot of pathos or maybe, yeah. Vodka. Uh, yeah, we don't need to define it. It's open to interpretation. That's right. It's much like the the music itself, right? We have uh, we 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 can explore what kind of shots to go. But actually, my marketing people said, um, "How many shots of Tchaikovsky before you're under the table, Michael?" I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna I'll be shooting Tchaikovsky every day until now and June first and beyond. So, so yeah. I'll let you know how how I survive. You know? You know, and how my tolerance is. Very good. Well, we'll both find out. We'll both see how we feel at the end of that evening. But I'm yeah. thrilled to be looking forward to it. And you're... I'm looking forward to it, too, and to being back there with you. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. Okay, well, good good studies, travels, music, meals, everything in between. Thank you. i got to go back to practicing now. Gotta go All right. Thanks, so, Michael. Thanks, David. Good to see you. Can't yes. wait. We'll see you soon. We'll bring our bring our brief visit to a close right now.